in the previous video, we talked about how to productize a very complex service that's SEO. And I purposely let off with this video, even though it's more advanced because these concepts are so important and they're not talked about at all in the SEO industry. However, these concepts are better for agencies that are doing $25,000 or more in client revenue. If you're doing less than that, then you should start here. So all the same concepts apply in terms of productization, in terms of focusing on the deliverables that move the needle. But in this video, we're just gonna be talking about it through the scope of delivering that through a six or 12 month contract. In this video, I'm gonna show you how our sprint model is the exact same deliverables that we do over a 12 month contract. It's just packaged and positioned differently for the clients who need more handholding, more attention and just more ongoing work than a client who just needs some executed work done via a sprint. So with that being said, this is the exact project plan that we use for sprints. This is also the exact project plan that we use for 12 month contracts every single deliverable as well as every single template that we use. I'm gonna run you through each one of those line by line in this video. Let's jump in. So if you remember in the previous video, I walked you through our five part SEO framework. These are all of the core elements or the deliverables that we need to do for a client to get them results. Now again, in the previous video, we talked about how we packaged these into sprints, right? Each one of these essentially became a sprint. However, if a sprint model is not good for the client, or again, if are you doing less than $25,000 a month in revenue, then we want to package this into a long-term contract. We do that through what we call our base project plan. The base project plan is what we teach in the blueprint training. This is a fundamental tool that we give to all of our members so they can use this and apply it really as a swipe file for all their clients. Now I'm giving it to you to use the swipe file absolutely free. So let's jump into the spreadsheet and take a closer look at it. So what you're looking at right here is a done for you 12 month project plan. We call it the base project plan. It's the exact same thing that we give to all of our members in the blueprint training. It's the exact same thing that we use at our agency for clients. And it's now what I'm giving to you to use as a swipe file to run for your own SEO campaigns. Now, real quick, uh, the columns up top just kind of dictate exactly everything that we need to run this project plan. If you're not using sheets, if you're using Trello, if you're using Basecamp, whatever you're using, uh, you don't have to use this format. All we're giving you is really uh, the deliverable and also the cadence of when you should be doing these over a six or 12 month contract. So in order to make this more legible to walk through right now, I'm just gonna hide some columns, due date, that's very understandable. The owner, this is who's gonna be running the actual deliverable. In the previous video, remember we talked about how we only have two roles. You can see it's SEO strategist or offshore. Those are the two roles that we have assigned here. Very straightforward, you can just replace it with whoever who's gonna run it. The project, this is just the client, right? This is templated. So whatever you type in there, it'll pull through uh, the client name. So that way you can add it to your root project plan. Again, this is just a template. We use this to edit it, to get it customized, and then we'll add it into our root project management tracker where we track all of our clients. Then we have deliverable and task. Uh, for every deliverable, there may be multiple tasks, right? If you're doing a technical audit, there's a number of things that roll up into doing a technical audit. So one deliverable might have multiple tasks, pretty straightforward. Status is easy. And then my favorite part, these three columns over here. Each one of these you can see has a template which is where our staff will be doing the work. We like to leave these links here just to make it easy for them. They just open it up, make a copy, and then they can do the work right in there. A presentation. So for example, I'll run you through some of these, but some things we don't want to just send a spreadsheet to a client. We like to put things into docs or slides uh, to add some nice visuals and presentation value so we can better communicate the work that we did. And finally, training down here. So each one of these links directly to a training within the Blueprint training. Uh, this is how we train all of our staff. We literally put them into the project plan. We assign them work, and then we say, here's a template, here's a presentation if you need it, and then here's the training. Watch this video, uh, watch all these videos really, uh, and it will tell you exactly what you need to do in order to run each one of these deliverables. It's highly effective. Uh, this is why we call the Blueprint Training an Agency in a Box, because it's really hands-free everything for you and for your staff to run these processes at a very efficient and effective level. So with that being said, uh, what I wanna do is just start to run through each of these deliverables. And again, what I wanna do is hide some columns here just so this becomes more manageable to look at so you're not getting death by spreadsheets. So what you're looking at right here is all the things that we're gonna do in month one. Number one is a kickoff report. Number two is a website quality audit. And number three is keyword research. So let's break these down a little bit more. The kickoff report is a data studio report that we run, it's a template. Uh, it pulls through all the client data and what it allows us to do is understand exactly what's happened on that website in the past uh, and what we learned from it so that way we can 
derive any decisions that we might need to make uh, or if there's anything that happened to the website in the past that we need to be aware of if traffic's fallen off a cliff uh, if they've been penalized what are their best uh, keywords what are their best landing pages what type of queries are they ranking for what's their branded search versus their non-branded search all these things help us to really quickly get up to speed on what's happened with that website in the past so we'll run this using a va it takes five minutes uh, and then we'll send this to the client but we'll also use this internally for a tool for communication. So again, we're all on the same page and we can properly take what happened during the sales conversation, push it into delivery, and then have our delivery team got brought up to speed and start formulating a strategy that's actually gonna work for this client. So after we go through something, we'll just mark it completed. Uh, the website quality audit, this is our flagship audit. This is really the core uh, of what we do for a lot of clients. It's a quasi technical audit, a quasi content audit, a quasi SEO roadmap and strategy. It's really, really effective. This is a tool, like I said, that we built internally. It pulls in data from all these different sources here uh, and it aggregates them at the URL level. This is a setup tab that comes with it. It's super easy to run. Uh, it literally just runs you through step by step for how to pull in all the data. And then here's a completed version. And what it does, it aggregates all this data at the URL level. So what's important about this is now we have every page on the website with all this amazing SEO data. This SEO data, everything from keywords to conversions to links uh, to the number of words on the page to the word count, the H1, H2, etc. All this data, we can now look at each one of these pages and make a decision about how we want to handle this from an SEO point of view. So what we do is we tag these pages with what are called URL actions. These URL actions dictate everything that we want to do for these pages. It could be leave it as is, it could be canonicalize it, 301 it, no index, content audit, etc. All these different directives help us to carry this forward in the next steps of the campaign. So the output of this is not only having every single page of the website tagged, but now we also have the data needed to feed into the next parts of the campaign. And I'm gonna show you as we go through the other deliverables how that works. I had also mentioned that we build these presentation decks because again, it's not great to just send a spreadsheet to a client. There's other work that should go with it so they can understand exactly what you did. Again, especially if you're working with clients that might not be as sophisticated from an SEO point of view, they don't wanna see a massive spreadsheet, they wanna see the output of your work. So these decks that we give uh, to all of our Blueprint members now that you have access to here as well, help you to properly communicate the work that you've done. It's really, really important when it comes to uh, building relationships with clients, especially selling long-term contracts. You want to do a 12-month contract. You got to be constantly adding value. You can't add value if the client doesn't understand what you're doing and they don't see the value in your work. So these decks really help to drive that home. All this is templated for you and done for. You just got to make a copy of it, change the logo, and it's all yours. And mark that complete. And then after we run the website quality audit, the next thing that we do is keyword research. So this is an important little distinction here. Uh, and this is where, again, having a great understanding of SEO and having experience and running SEO for a while and really going through long-term contracts and working hand on hand with clients is so important because sometimes you encounter a website that might have a thousand pages that need keyword research, right? So like an e-commerce website has a thousand product pages, for example, all those pages need to be reviewed for keyword targeting and then on page targeting as well. So you can see how we added this note in here that says may need to add more section one. If we're working with an e-commerce website, we're probably gonna need to do multiple sections of keyword research. These are things, of course, that you're gonna wanna identify during the sales process. Again, we teach this very strictly in the blueprint about how to identify needs of a website up front. But then you wanna roll that into your project plan by just adding more line items to do keyword research. And you wanna break up that keyword research based on level of effort. You have to understand how long it's taking you to do keyword research for each page, and then baseline how many pages you can do per month based on what they're paying you. However, if you're working with like a lawyer website or a smaller B2B WordPress website, then you might only need to do keyword research one time, right, for the product and services pages. It might not take more than a couple hours because they might only have a couple of pages. You need to understand the distinction when you're pitching the client and then also when you're rolling out your project plans. That's really important. Let's take a look at what the keyword research document looks like. So I made a note how the website quality audit feeds into next parts of the campaign. You can see this data up here is all coming from the website quality audit. We already pulled this data. We already have this data. We're just going to fold it into this template by copying and pasting it. It's really effective. And basically all that we're doing here is we're just going through and we're identifying what the main keyword for, for these pages should be. The volume, the current rank, and then secondary or semantic keywords, and then also tagging it by journey stage. This isn't rocket science here. This is keyword research at its finest. You know, at the end of the day, we don't necessarily teach methods here that are better than any other keyword research method out there. What we teach is a process. We give you a system and a framework to work with. So that becomes more manageable and more scalable when you're working with clients and you're always ensuring that quality is at the utmost importance. So some of the other things that we built in here too, 
is when we're doing queued research, we're trying to understand what ranks a website. It's not always about your website or the client's website. It's also about what's happening in the SERPs, right? Who is currently ranking for those keywords and what is their authority? What have they done? What type of content is that? This is stuff that we need to understand if we're going to properly optimize a page to rank for that keyword. So what we've done is we built in this little manual section here where we pull in the data from Ahrefs for the top three results for Google. And this is important because this allows us, again, to understand the type of content that's ranking, if it's a blog post, if it's a homepage, if it's a product page. So that way we can understand if the page that we're trying to rank is optimized properly for what Google wants to rank. Google tells us all these things just based on what they're currently ranking. So this data helps us to really understand and formulate that. And what's cool is that our amazing team at our agency automated a lot of this. So after you go through and you fill in this manual data, it goes and calculates all these different metrics here in terms of opportunity score, uh, link opportunity score. It's just calculated metrics that are telling us based on the top three SERPs for this keyword, how many links do we need? What type of content should our page be? And it's cool because we built in these little charts too here that help you to visualize this stuff. So that's keyword research in a nutshell. But off the back of this, this deck is where a lot more of this will come into play for you. So again, we don't want to just send a client a massive spreadsheet. We also want to give them uh, our analysis and what we found because that's really what they care about. They care about the output of our work, not necessarily how the sausage is made. So we wrote up this deck that summarizes everything that we did, the process, the journey stage, all the things that I just talked about, scraping the top three results, crosswalking it against competitors, and then it goes into what we learned, right? So we teach you how to do all this within the blueprint. And then this is where these charts come into play. So this is great, again, for clients who don't want to read a lot, who don't want to see a huge spreadsheet, having the ability to create uh, just diagrams like this that facilitate difficult conversations. When I say facilitate difficult conversations, I mean, if a client is dead set on ranking for the best attorney in the world, uh, and he's trying to rank, I don't know, like a service page for that, but the data is telling you that, hey, for this keyword, this is what's ranking. Uh, for the most part, it's mostly resource guides. You're not gonna rank that type of page for that type of keyword. This is the data that you can present to the client that gives you the ammunition needed to do your job properly. Again, we talked about it in the previous video. At the end of the day, we're always trying to do what's best for the client. How do we take them from where they are to a happy client that's ranking high and getting more traffic and sales? We need to do our job in order to do so, and we need to do that unimpeded. But if we are being impeded by a client's opinion who doesn't necessarily know what's best for them, then we have the data to showcase that and to support our argument. So this just goes, also goes into links and authority. Another big one here is a lot of clients can be hesitant about building links. Uh, but if you can clearly show them that this is the client here in blue, this is your domain authority. These are the domain authority of, of your competitors out there that are ranking for your keywords. We need to build links. And this is going to take a lot of time to build links and to build the authority to get you to where you want to be. Again, that's a very difficult conversation that uh, you need to have with clients and having this type of data and presentation makes it a lot easier. They're just gonna trust you more, it's positioning you as authority, and it's the correct way to do things. So after we get through queued research, uh, we now have this really cool monthly report that we built in Google Data Studio. Now I love this report because it's not only effective and automated, right? We literally just have to make a copy of it, uh, but it clearly communicates exactly what's going on with the website to the point where anyone can see this. So again, Data Studio is a free tool. It's part of the Google suite. It's another reason why we use it. No recurring fees. It allows you to build custom dashboards. We've already built these custom dashboards for you in the blueprint. You literally just have to make a copy of them and plug in your client's data. Uh, but essentially this will track everything that uh, you need to report on from a client point of view when it comes to an SEO campaign. It's 13 pages, you can edit this up or down, you can add more, you can add less, what have you. But again, it just gives you all the ammunition needed to explain to the client everything that's been done that, that month and also the progress that they're making. Very, very effective reporting tool. Strongly suggest you looking into using Data Studio if you're not currently doing so. So that's month one. Let's now unlock more and go into what we're gonna be talking about in month two. Next line item here is target pages. This is simply an organizational file that we use. It just pulls in uh, the pages that we selected from the website quality audit and organizes them in a way that the client clearly understands which pages that we're gonna be focusing on. And then we feed that back into the monthly report so the client can see the progress that we've made on the pages that we focus on. Again, this is a very important client management tool because sometimes uh, this is all about kind of beating back objections before they come, right? So if you, do a ton of work for a website and uh, the overall organic traffic goes up, but the client's like, oh, like, uh, how do I know that these are the pages that you worked on? Now you have this proof. It's just, uh, again, a very simple method to stay organized, uh, to keep your data clean and to report to clients in a way that they clearly understand. Very easy to set up. It literally is just an output of the website quality audit. 
So the next thing that we'll do here is on page correction. So again, you see this note here that says section one may need to add more. If we're doing this for an e-commerce website, these are two things that we'll add more of. We'll just do these every month in perpetuity for the client, uh, just based again on the level of effort. If it's a B2B website, smaller website, which is what we usually work with at our agency, we can knock these, both of these out in the first month. So what's cool about this is that we built in uh, an automated checklist. Again, pulling data from the website, Quality Audit will automatically run these pass fails based on the data that we wrote. We wrote these if statements, so uh, it's actually really cool. It'll pull through all this stuff completely automatically, saves you a ton of time, also just gives you something to send, like a nice touch point with the client. Be like, hey, this is what we're working on for the next two weeks. Uh, here's a checklist. You can see how you've already performed. Now the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be going through all these pages and writing through the on-page optimizations for you. And then over here in the recommendations tab, this is where we really get our hands dirty. We call this the on-page matrix. So all the pages that we did keyword research for, we're gonna add them in here. Uh, we're gonna add in all the top keywords that we already found. We've already done that part. Now it's about taking these keywords and putting them into action. This is something that a lot of people forget about. They do keyword research and then they just send it to a client. And they're like, here's keywords. Like keywords are nothing unless you put them into action. The way that we put them into action is through uh, increasing body count, through rewriting re page titles, H1s, uh, schema, internal links, all these different things. So this is where we wanna go through and do that. Uh, we'll rewrite the recommended title, uh, recommended meta, H1, H2, subheading, etc. cetera. Uh, we'll then also put in internal linking uh, recommendations, everything again that they need to take action on these pages. Now, we're not quite done here. We'll send them this matrix, and after we send them the matrix, then we'll put together uh, what we call page level SEO recommendations or content briefs. We do these content briefs because we don't write content, right? It's not a good use of our time uh, or our expertise to go into an attorney's website and rewrite the service pages uh, based on the SEO recommendations. So we're not gonna do that. But what we do is we put together these content briefs. These content briefs dictate everything that needs to be done. Again, based on that on-page matrix that we just did, we'll put in the page title, we'll put in the word count, we'll put in the meta description, preferred URL, framing keywords, everything, internal links that they need to then take this and turn this into an effective page. On top of that, we'll actually go through and put an outline for the page. So the actual H2s that they need, uh, any specific elements that they need, we'll give them all the different notes here. Again, we basically call this for writers, a coloring book for writers for when it comes to SEO, because the, all they gotta do is fill this out and stay within the lines and they're gonna have a page that ranks or puts them in the best position to rank. So this is really a large part of the output of our work. For every page that we do Q research for, we'll then do the on-page research and then we'll deliver a page outline. So after we do those, we'll send them another monthly report because that's the month end. We'll just basically update the data, a VA does that, and then month two is done. So now what do we do in month three? What's up next? Well, now we're starting to push into the content portion of the campaign. So again, if we come back here, we can start to kind of check off the things that we've already done. We've built the project plan, we've reviewed the data via that data studio report, we've done the website quality audit for the technical evaluation, we've done the keyword research, part one, we'll talk about part two in a second, and we've done the on-page improvement. So we're already basically half the way through this campaign, and we're just getting started in month three. Now again, some of these things could be extended based on the type of website that you're working with. If it's e-commerce, then this improve stage is gonna be pushed way out. If it's a smaller B2B website, this is gonna be done much shorter, just like we showed. And then this part, the content strategy that we're going into now will be pushed way out because content is gonna be much more important for B2B companies like an agency, like a lawyer, like an insurance company, as opposed to an e-commerce company that really needs to rank those product pages. So jumping back into our project plan, the first thing that we'll do when it comes to content is review any existing content that they have. And the reason we wanna view, review existing content before building new content is because we don't wanna cannibalize topics. And maybe they have some low hanging fruit pages that are ranking pretty well, but need a new page title, they need some more depth, they need some media, or they just need some links maybe. We wanna focus on those pages first because the fastest turnaround in traffic always comes from updating existing assets as opposed to creating new ones. Those pages already have some equity in search engines, they're already ranking, maybe they just need a little boost. So what we'll do is we'll use the website quality audit to do so. All we're gonna do here is filter for anything that we tagged as content audit. And now again, we have all the data that we need to start reviewing these pages to understand what's happening with them and how we can improve them. So part one is going through the website quality audit and looking at pages that were tagged as content audit from the scope of a content audit. Meaning, do we need to update this? Do we need to rep deprecate it? Do we need to redirect it? Do we need to delete this completely? It's no longer relevant. We go through and we look at those and then we start to formulate some detailed recommendations, which we'll push into the content matrix that I'm gonna show you right now. 
So after we do the content audit, we're going to do what we call the keyword gap analysis. So this is keyword research. We call this part one. Keyword research part two is what we call the keyword gap analysis. A keyword gap analysis is another really cool tool that we built. And basically what this does is all of our tools also that run in Sheets, you get this nice little kind of summary tab that tells you everything you need to do to set this up. But what it does is it pulls in five competitors keyword data and then pulls in the current keywords from your client's website. And what we're left with is this matrix here that shows keyword search volume, keyword difficulty, and then the best rank and the best rank competitor. Now, then what it does is it shows us here the client website versus the five competitor websites to show which ones are ranking for these keywords and if the client is ranking for these keywords. Now, we call this a gap analysis because what we're doing is we're looking for the gaps that our client website is not ranking for that the competitors are ranking for. If we see high volume, high intent keywords that our client is not using, then we'll take those and we'll start to formulate those into content topics, content hubs, and then again, pushing those into our content matrix. So we started with the content audit and we started to get some topic ideas that maybe need to get updated we migrated those into a content matrix which i'm going to show you in a second i promise and then we go through this new process where we're looking for new keywords and we take those new keyword ideas and we'll migrate those in the content matrix as well where we then start turning these keyword ideas into real content topics so after we do that let's just open up what the content matrix looks like it's kind of like a quasi calendar but without the dates but this is really where uh, we call it a workbook because this is where we're doing this is a working file we're constantly working on it we're constantly adding new topics coming up with ideas flushing them out etc so we come up with a topic the main idea the main keyword the traffic potential pillar and cluster really good pillar and cluster this is an organizational concept that we use i'll link to a youtube video that i have that will talk more about it serpentent is another really great concept that we talk about within the blueprint uh, then we'll also dictate the page type in the content tactic so remember when we were talking about keyword research and what was ranking for those keywords and the type of content that was ranking this is where we can start to dictate that so for example if we go through the process going back to the that attorney who wanted to rank for that keyword but i showed you the data that showed that a resource page is ranking so now we can take that keyword put it here and we can assign that to a resource guy, right? Because that's the type of content that we know Google wants to rank. This goes into what Serpentent is too. It's just a more surgical method to do so. Uh, and then the content tactic is how we're going to create that. Is it going to be a listicle? Is it going to be a wiki article? Is it going to be a video? Is it going to be an expert guide? Is it going to be uh, curated around up all these different types of content tactics that again are also dictated on what Google wants to rank for that given keyword. So if we got this keyword topic from the content audit, then we'll mark this as a rewrite because we're going to be updating that. If we got it from keyword research, then we're going to mark this as new. Just so we're on the same page about uh, where this content topic is coming from and ultimately the source of this so we're not creating two topics about the same thing. Then we just go into the blowing out some more of the keyword research, same thing that we talked about, kind of those secondary framing keywords here. These are really going to build out kind of the framework for the article um, and uh, the H1s, the H2s, all the different things that kind of build up the meat of it and build the context for the article. Then we'll also just drop some notes in here as well. So let's jump back to the project plan real quick because you can see here that it says build out XX new topics for creation or just content topics. So this is part of the ongoing work and will dictate how many content topics we need to build for this client during the proposal process. So for example, we usually recommend for most folks uh, between four to six per month. So we'll do this content topic ideation every quarter. So if we're doing four every quarter, then that would be 12 new topics. So our strategist has to go through and build out 12 new topics here, either from the getting ideas from the content audit or from uh, the keyword gap analysis, wherever they can get them from, it doesn't really matter. We just need 12 really good topics that are high intent, high volume and ready to rank for. So after we go through that, we'll send them another monthly report and now we're done with month three. So in month four, we'll kind of summarize what we did here with the content audit keyword gap analysis and the topic ideation into this strategy deck. This again is, a, is another one of those decks that we use to convey and communicate very complex topics. Content is a huge thing that we do for clients. It's a huge part of the ongoing deliverables that you do as a part of a 12 month retainer, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. So it's really important that we're communicating uh, everything that we went through to get to this point because we did so much work it's kind of like showing your work on a high school paper we want to get the credit from the client for it because now we're going into month five and we're kind of getting to that point where maybe they're like hey what's up with my traffic what are you doing for me to show them a killer deck like this that shows them who we're targeting from an audience point of view what type of content so again uh, i talked about this more selecting what type of content we want to create uh, the different content tactics blog posts versus curated roundup all these different things this breaks down for them uh, and shows them get my head out the way excuse me uh, all these different types of things that we've thought through from a strategy point of view then what we'll do 
is we'll actually summarize uh, the existing topics that we pulled from the content audit, if there's any, uh, and just put them in here. So now we're showing them, hey, we did all this strategy work for you. Now here's some of the output. Here are the topics that we're actually coming up with, the keyword, and then I'm gonna show you these in just one second, uh, and then any new topics that we came up with as well. So this is, again, is just kind of a nice way to tie a nice bow on the content that we just did all last month. So we're getting credit for this work, and now we're kicking this into the actual creation of content. And again, the way that we do that is through these page level SEO recommendations. So I'm gonna skip over these two for just one second, just so I can tie a bow on content. So again, when I said that uh, we're doing 12 topics, uh, the page level SEO recommendations, this is how many we're doing per month. So that would be four per month. So what we do now, and I can see it may need to add more here as well, just depending on how much content we're creating. Now we're just going back through and we're doing these same documents again. So this, this is, again, this is the output of any type of content work we're doing, whether it's for a landing page or whether it's for a blog post, a video, whatever. We're delivering these page level SEO recommendations or content briefs that spell out everything that they need to know. This is the output of our work. We're passing this to them go execute on this. We're doing as much of the legwork as we possibly can, just take this and do this. So this, again, is part of this ongoing work that we're doing for clients, that's so important, and you'll see these come up throughout the rest of the contract uh, for how we're just doing these kind of in perpetuity. So the next thing that we're doing this month is going to be our link building audit and strategy. And what we're doing here, this is actually really delivered through the same deck. We have a strategy deck that we use. Um, it's a really, really awesome strategy deck. I'm actually giving it to you guys for access here for free. Uh, what this deck does, it just runs them through, uh, a lot of clients are not necessarily always that adept when it comes to link building. So it just runs them through link, what link building is. Uh, we do an analysis of their current link profile, their authority versus the competition, anchor text versus competition, what their current best links are, competitors' best links, quick win opportunities. Um, then it goes into how we acquire links. Again, we talk about and teach this all in the blueprint exactly how you can get links without sweating it. Um, all the different things that, again, we are going to do for them. And I'll let you review this deck on your own. So it's a quasi audit plus strategy that we'll do for clients. Uh, just kind of sets the tone for link building. And then after we do that, then we send the monthly report. And now we're done with month four. So now uh, I'm just gonna leave this open because what you're gonna see here from this point on is all the same thing over and over. These content briefs, so every month they're getting four content briefs and then every month we're building links for them. So the way that we build links for clients is we actually outsource this completely to a partner. Uh, they handle all the links, we just basically pay them per link and then we upcharge that link cost to clients. They do a very good job, they do all outreach, uh, they deliver what we need, but to the client, uh, you know, we're still doing the link building for them. We don't necessarily tell them that we're using a vendor However, we're getting the same quality links, if not better, because we're working with a specialist who only does links. And then again, we'll just pass that cost on to the client. I talk about all this in the blueprint, how you can position and sell links properly without taking it out of your own pocket. And also with like dealing with clients bitching about paying about links, which, you know, again, I talk about that in depth in the blueprint. So again, you can see here, we're just doing page level recommendations, building links, and then every quarter we're building new content topics. This is all that we're doing. So you can see here in the first four months, we're doing about 90% of the work. And then after that is where we're just delivering content topics, uh, the, the page level content topics, and then also just delivering links for this client. And the client knows this, they have access to that. We tell them that, you know, a large reason why they're paying us a monthly contract is because we're front loading the work and we're spreading it out over 12 months so you can afford to pay us. Otherwise, if you wanna pay us for sprints, it's gonna be more expensive uh, and it's gonna cost you more upfront. It'll be done quicker, but it'll be done upfront. What's also really cool about this is when we look at who's actually doing the work here, when it comes to these months, let me just hide this for you here too so it's easy to look at. You can see that the first couple of months are pretty heavy on our local team, the SEO strategist, but after this, after month four, 100% of everything that we do is managed by our offshore team. So what that means for us is it means uh, better margins, it means less work for our strategists and local teams so they can focus on moving big rocks. Um, and the only way that you can get here is through a very detailed process or a productized service. So what I'm hoping to show you with this is that we're running the same thing here, right? We're literally delivering the exact same deliverables uh, in our SEO sprints that we're doing here. It's just packaged and positioned differently, but we're able to do that and we're able to be agile and you can too because the service that we have is so heavily productized. Everything that we have is clearly spelled out here with templates, presentations, and trainings. Literally anyone with any sort of basic SEO knowledge can go through this. And that's really what we have to offer you here at the Blueprint Training. If you're doing less than 25K per month, you need this. This is going to help you get all your ducks in a row. It's gonna help you focus on strategies, it's gonna help you focus on growing the business because the operation side of your business is now taken care of. All you need to do 
is get someone with a little bit of SEO knowledge and push them through this and they will be able to run it for you. If you want to get past 25K, you've got to pull yourself out of your services. If you're still doing the SEO work because you've told yourself that nobody else is as smart as you, nobody else can do it, it's really contact, blah, blah, blah. It's not. I know I just threw a whole fire hose at you that you're drinking from now, but what I'm again, what I'm hoping to get you to understand is that this is a process. This is simple. This is not overly complicated and that if you can't pull yourself out of your services, if you can't grow past a certain point because you're still doing the work, you're standing in your own way and I'm giving you a solution to get out of your own way, completely done for you. So if you want to learn more about this, there's a link below directly to my calendar. We can chat and I can show you how you can take this and apply it and bend it to your business and your agency and how we can help you grow. Uh, it's very, very simple. So Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, again, these templates, I'm going to link to them below. These are yours to use. Uh, most of them anyways, not all of them. The website quality, you got to pay for. But all the other templates, these are here. These are for you, you to use. Take them, use them, ask questions. Uh, hit us up in Slack. We're here for you. We're really here to help you out and to help you grow. So if you have any questions, uh, either hit the, the link below and let's chat or hit me up on Slack. Peace out.